Good afternoon. My name is James Laurie. Teacher professional development is in crisis, particularly in the most vulnerable, fragile and low income environments. We know teaching is an art form. We were told that yesterday by Ken Robinson on the video. Teaching is an art form. Yet, in lots of locations today, teaching is taking place which is rote-centred. It's lecture-based. It's uninspiring. And children are not learning. Now, the consequence of this is that, according to one education economist, up to 250 million children are failing to develop basic skills 250 million, it's a huge number. We often reference the uh, 57 million who are denied access to school. Yet, here we are talking about 250 million, more than four times that figure, who are in school but not developing the necessary basic skills. This presentation is about presenting uh, six ways in which we can change the quality of education, change teachers. We know donors UN agencies, NGOs pump a lot of energy, pump a lot of time and a lot of commitment into teacher education, to teacher training, into teacher professional development. But we need to train, change the way we do it. We need to change our strategy. Now, here's the truth. I'm guilty too. I was working in Cambodia a few years ago. I was a teacher trainer. I was working with a group of people in um, the western area of the country. I delivered a series of workshops. I worked with a group of teachers and I realized two things. Well, I realized using observation of classrooms and discussion. I realized that for teachers to change, they need intensive forms of support and multiple forms of support to actually change their behavior in classrooms, to become better teachers, to provide better learning opportunity. So, Six suggestions. These emerge from blog series that I co-convened earlier this year. The blog series was on the INEE website. Um, 19 international education experts, 19 blogs, over 300 comments within the discussion, all about this topic, teacher professional development in uh, fragile, vulnerable locations. And uh, these six emerge from that. So the first one, work with brilliant teacher educators. Poor teacher training fails teachers. Too often, the people who are delivering that training are not teachers themselves, they are not professional pedagogues, and they do not understand the realities of the classroom, how you take children through a process of learning. And they do not understand the role of the teacher and how teachers are performing, yet they're working, in these working as teacher trainers. I'm not talking about just those training workshop skills. I'm talking about classroom observation, providing feedback, working with that teacher, listening to that teacher, understanding where they are and helping them move forward. These are the skills we need to develop. Further, we need to think about the qualifications and the, uh, the quality of the performance of those professional teacher educators. The qualifications of the individual and the performance of that individual teacher trainer and also the organizations the organizations, the national NGOs, the teacher training institutes, the private sector companies who are working as teacher educators. Now, let's remember that those national level organizations remain in that country. Long after the INGOs have disappeared, long after the major donors have changed their priorities. So we need to be working with them as well. So how do we do it? We recruit better quality teacher educators and we provide them with continuous and thorough support for the teacher educator. So, number one, we work and we invest in teacher educators. The second one, measuring performance. Um, all these quotes you see on the screen, they are all direct from the blog series that, um, that's available online. It's still online now, I believe. Um, this one's from Mary um, from the Education Development Center in the US. Teachers are not assessed rigorously nor objectively. Training programs too often do not reflect the, uh, the needs of those teachers. And too often, the provision of training does not meet minimum thresholds of quality. So how do we address this? The first thing we've got to do is measure teacher performance before a, a program or an intervention, throughout, 
and at the end, and provide an individualized service to that teacher. At the macro level, we should be designing standards for teachers, standards for professional development providers. And thirdly, we, we need to evaluate, rigorously evaluate professional development programs. Um, I don't mean that workshop evaluation form where you fill in, I very much enjoyed this workshop. I mean thorough evaluation, impact evaluation that tells us what the change is inside classrooms. If it's short term, we need to be observing those teachers and using classroom observation methodologies to understand the performance of the teacher. If it's longer term, which I hope most of them are, then we can start looking at student performance. So, the second point, we, uh, we get serious about quality and we measure it. Third point, we do what we know works. We build on evidence. We need to do things such as conducting literature reviews. We need to be tapping into that knowledge management depository which exists inside our organisations and other organisations. We need to be developing learning systems within the programmes we produce. Learning systems where we capture knowledge, we capture understanding of how people are performing. And we need to start communicating stuff openly, boldly, honestly. Even if things are not so rosy, we share them openly. And that, the way, that's the way that we as a, an education community grow and perform better. And when we do this, when we do start to invest in best practices, learning from others, we find that the training programs we provide are much longer term. Research tells us that for a teacher to perform better, it's 30 to 100 hours worth of support for that teacher. Um, we also know that that sustained, intensive, skill-based energy inside schools, inside classroom works. So, we do what we know works. We build the evidence base. The fourth one. This is from Paul, the uh, International Rescue Committee. We bring teachers together. The most effective m models for teacher professional development bring teachers together in a process of shared inquiry and in collaborative learning. Collaborative, le collaborative work at the school level encourages take-up. If the teachers are involved in making those decisions, if the head teacher is involved in making decisions, they build a community, they build a commitment to change within their school. So we need to get into schools and make sure our work is at that school level, at that teacher level. Um, check out teacher learning circles. It's a, a model um, that uh, is being used in various locations by NGOs and other people. Um, but above all, it's about emphasizing the importance of getting inside the school and providing support to teachers, not in the external workshop, but very much inside the school. So, collaborative learning. Fifth, support teachers. Keep supporting treat teachers and treat them as professionals. We know that sustained, intensive and quality teacher professional development leads to student achievement. We know this. In the blog series that lasted three months, a bit less than three months, teacher support emerged as the salient thread in the teacher development fabric. It was the salient thread, teacher support. So what does support mean? How do we provide that support? Support could be through in-school coaching, in-school in instruction, maybe using video. Video is highly available, it's on mobile phones. Film a teacher, talk with the teacher about how that works afterwards, get the teacher to assess themselves. Peer observation between teachers, reviewing performance, small group work inside the school. We need to invest in those principles, the school head, school head teacher. They are the lead learner inside the school. We need to be working with them, getting them to, uh, to understand how they can support their staff, their colleagues. And we need to make sure the materials that are in school are of high quality, open education resources and the resources available at the national level. And to be blunt, supporting teachers means treating them as professionals and paying them as much. Finally, keep innovating and capture knowledge. We need to ramp up evaluation, research and innovation. And as I said, we need to share this openly, online, available to all, 
easily downloaded to ensure that we can all benefit and learn from our professional development programs. The successes, the lessons learned, and the failings. And I really mean open. If we're doing pilots, early stage work, and that's, we need to innovate. We need to do those early stage pilots, and we need to, when we're at the early stage pilot, we need to use case study methodologies to really understand. When things start to look good, these pilots, we ramp them up, we take them to scale, and we start trying to understand outcomes. Are we achieving these education outcomes? We need to really be using technology wisely. There's a lot of technology out there. There's a lot of people are trying very interesting things in, in the use of technology for teacher professional development. We need to understand them well, not suffer from uh, pilotitis, but really use them well and understand which ones to, uh, to take forward. We need to also be borrowing liberally from each other. Stealing, or just borrowing, openly. Lots of organizations do some fantastic things. Let's encourage collaboration, working together. Um, a few thoughts. I think we need to learn from programs like English in Action in Bangladesh, OERs for Africa in Zambia, um, the TESA program across Sub-Saharan Africa, and the use of radio instruction in places like Guinea, Somalia, and South Sudan. We need to be testing ideas at the pilot stage. We need to be scaling up ideas. And again, let's uh, communicate openly. So, six points. If we improve the quality of teaching, we improve the quality of learning. We need to continually be searching for ways to improve the quality of classroom performance because quality teachers leads to child learning. We need to work at this at the international level, the national level, the district level, the school, and above all, the teacher level. So that in five years, that 250 million children, 250 million who are currently not learning in schools, not learning well enough in schools, is a thing of the past. We need to be investing in teachers, we need to be investing in schools. And we need to be aiming for zero children not learning inside classrooms. Thank you.